Ava, what are you making? Nothing. I'm making the bread. Bread? Tea. Bread. The bread box is completely overflowing. You've got bread in the toaster, bread in the microwave. Even the oven still has bread in it. What are we gonna do with it all? I have a plan for all my bread. Come on, you know me. Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. As you can see, Eva's hands are a little full. Uh, Eva really likes to make bread and to buy bread. She's a little bit obsessed with bread. Uh, but luckily, she has something that she does with bread, which means that we never waste bread. This, as you can see, is a jar of breadcrumbs. And it kind of surprised me to learn when I met Ava that breadcrumbs are kind of a staple of Italian food. Ava uses them in all kinds of crazy, creative ways. And so I thought that was kind of unusual. I've never just had a jar of breadcrumbs always in my pantry ready to go. Uh, so I thought that uh, Ava could maybe show us some of the unique and interesting ways that she uses breadcrumbs. Uh, and even starting with how to make them at home yourself. Okay, Harper, enough laughing around. Let's make some breadcrumbs. <laughs> that was a crummy pun. <laughs> so guys, Harper uh, went the other day for uh, grocery shopping and he came home with this loaf of bread. He read the Italian bread, uh, Italian loaf, and he decided to buy this. But let's be sincere, I'm not going to eat this bread because it's not real. Uh, Italian bread. But for sure we can do a very good breadcrumb. So it's a cheap loaf of bread, nothing fancy. And what we are going to do is cut these in pieces and bake them in the oven at low temperature because we need it to be completely dry. Now the bread is in the oven and it needs to, to cook for 35 or 40 minutes or until it's completely dry. And maybe while it cooks you will need also to tear it in a smaller place just to make it completely dry. So we need uh, to do our bread crumb and what we are going to do is uh, grind our bread. Now we have uh, two ways in which we can do this. One way is the technological modern way using a, a food processor. The other way is the old school, old style uh, Calabrian way that is use, using this. So I'm going to show you both ways, but obviously I prefer this one. Okay, but now that we have our big jar of breadcrumbs ready to go, what's first on the menu? The first thing that I'm going to show you is how a breadcrumb, a simple breadcrumb, can spice up our pasta. What I'm going to cook right now is a plate of spaghetti with orange zest and lemon zest, so it's a citrus pasta. Here I have some lemongrass and I'm going to use this to give some aroma to our breadcrumb.
As you can see here, we have one plate of pasta without breadcrumbs and one with, because I'm curious to see what different breadcrumbs themselves make. So what is this pasta exactly? Uh, this is just a very simple dish of pasta with some butter, lemon zest, orange zest, and then we had some breadcrumb on. Well, let's see what it's like pre-breadcrumb. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh means uh, who is good or who is not good. It's very good. This time I'm not surprised though because I've finally learned the lesson that even these really simple pasta dishes can be delicious. I mean, it doesn't look like much. It's like some butter and some lemon zest, but it's delicious. Oh, I should stop eating that one. <laughs> I should try it with the breadcrumbs. The crunchy version. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Okay, that's a pretty good trick. That's a pretty good trick. Breadcrumbs as a topping. That is definitely a good thing. It gives that uh, crunchiness. Um, that toasted flavor. Yes. Which is nice. It's toasted. Oh, it's toasted. It tastes even better. What other kinds of pasta can you use this as a topping for? Which every very easy pasta just to give... Uh, oh, not easy. <laughs> this. I know what you mean. <laughs> can you do it with like... Aglio olio e pepperoncino. Mm -hmm. What about tomato sauce? No. no, because with tomato sauce, it's enough rich. Okay, well, we've certainly established that bread crumbs can be an excellent topping for a dish. What about actually cooking it into a dish, a dish that cooks with bread crumbs, if that makes sense? I have a plan also for this. Swiss chard, everyone's favorite vegetable. I love it. <laughs> I, I've come to appreciate Swiss chard. When I was a kid, I hated it. I think just the bitter taste is not really great for a kid's palate. Uh, so it was one of the vegetables I didn't like growing up, but I've come to appreciate it now. I grown up with this because my mom always cooked the, the Italian Swiss chard. And my mom cooked the Italian Swiss chard like this with parmigiano and breadcrumb. And I have a funny story because there was a period in my life in which I decided to be vegetarian. Uh -huh. And because like every mother from Italy and most from the south of Italy, they are scared that we don't eat enough. Every time that she cooked this dish for me, she put inside like one kilo of parmigiano, <laughs> three kilos of breadcrumb. So she was sure that uh, this can be also one complete dish <laughs> with enough fat, uh, veggies, uh, carbs, uh, protein. So she was, uh, she was happy to make this for me. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. No, tell me. Okay, if I had been served that as a kid, instead of just normal Swiss chard, I probably would have eaten pounds of it. That is an excellent dish if you're like a parent trying to sneak vegetables to your kid. <laughs> it's much more yummy. Well, because you've added bread. It's, it's bread. <laughs> My mom is very smart. She's a smart woman. It's kind of like a thickener, you know, almost like how you would add flour into something to thicken mm -hmm. it, except this has substance to it. With this sort of, with this recipe, uh, you can also make uh, artichokes or the other veggies that uh, you like. Maybe 
they don't have a lot of taste by themselves but with parmigiano and breadcrumb everything makes is everything okay. taste good well you've shown me breadcrumbs as a topping you've shown me breadcrumbs cooked into a dish to thicken it up make it more yummy what's next the next one Harper is a uh, breadcrumb pasta but we already had pasta with breadcrumbs no Harper we had the pasta and then breadcrumbs on the next one, the pasta is made by breadcrumbs. For this recipe I'm going to use uh, turkey broth and if there is a thing that I learned about Thanksgiving is that you have a ton of leftovers and because I don't like to waste my food I decided that I'm going to use my turkey broth but uh, Tom feel free to use uh, beef broth, uh, chicken, um, veggies uh, as you want or as you prefer. This is a bizarre dish. <laughs> this is what we call passatelli. Passatelli. It's a typical dish from uh, Emilia Romagna. And I hope that I did uh, an acceptable job. Also because I'm from Calabria, but... So it's a pasta served in broth. See? Si. And it's a pasta made from breadcrumbs. Breadcrumb eggs and parmigiana. Buon appetito! Buon appetito. Oh. Tell me. <laughs> no, tell me. That is a really good winter dish. It's perfect for winter. It's seriously really good. It's mm. a cold day today, so this is awesome. Wow. It's kind of like a it's kind of like nothing. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> it's, it's delicious. Come on. It's really good though. It's cheesy and warm. It's cheesy. It's warm. <laughs> It's fresh. Just when I thought I understood pasta. No. No. We can always surprise. <laughs> so breadcrumbs. They si. can be used as a topping. They can thicken and enhance a dish. And they can be the dish. All right, guys. Well, I hope we've inspired you to add a jar of breadcrumbs to your pantry. Uh, it's definitely become a staple for us. And I think it might for some of you, too. All the recipes will be down below in the video description. If you try any of them, please tag us on Instagram, at Pastagrammer. Click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Ciao! Ciao.